Hey guys, and welcome back to Die Hard with a Pizza Joe. In the last video, we started the Triforce hunt. We got five of the Triforce pieces, and in this video, we're going to get the last three. For the next piece, we're going to want to warp to Dragon Roost Island, because the next piece is located northeast of that. Yeah, this quest is way less painful than the original. It's less painful, but there's still one Triforce piece that's still kind of annoying to get. Yeah. But it's not too bad. Yeah, I made a big deal of being frustrated, but it's mostly because I haven't played the HD version at all. So, so like I said, northeast of Dragon Roost, we'll get there eventually. I believe this is called Overlook Island. It sounded like the music was being annoying at you on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> A bit of fair warning, there's gonna be speed up parts, and the next island we're gonna go to is gonna be a lot of speed up, so you know, if, about I believe three or four minutes or so. So, you know, if you don't like speed up or anything, you, you'll see it. Seizure or emotion sickness warning. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Look, I just don't want you to die because of me. <laughs> so, um, on this island, there's a rare blue choo choo. This choo choo, if you go and make it a potion, is a cure all, it heals all your magic meter and your hearts. However, because if you've completed the grandma side quest where, she, you know, when you first come back to Outside Island, it's raining and she's sick and you give, do, if you do that, she gives you the grandma soup, which is way better because not only do you get two helpings of that, but it also doubles your attack power until you get hit. So it's kind of useless unless you haven't done that, which you should do that because it's super easy. Still, it's uh, kind of neat, though, to see a blue one. Like the last Triforce piece, it's another one of those clear all the enemies thing. And here we have these guys. <laughs> oh, my ass! <laughs> it would probably be better to just use your own bombs, but I don't want to waste them. There's right here. They're mine. I like how they kind of go squinty eyed at you, like, you little bitch. <laughs> Well, I am the one who's been killing their population. <clears throat> but then again, I've been doing that to several other species. Extinction away! Hey look, they locked me in the room, I just want the piece. They do have Wario faces. Yeah! <laughs> 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 what? <laughs> I almost hit myself there with the bomb. That was for cutscene reasons. Like before, once you clear up all the rooms, all the dark nuts are gonna show up. I said in the last video I was gonna show up the magic armor, but I forgot that I'd do it in this video. You showed it off eventually, and that's the important thing. Yeah. <laughs> so I mentioned before that uh, you can use a bomb and it will totally like just like one hit kill these guys and it'll just turn into the head. You're gonna see me doing that from this point on because it's actually really fun and much easier. <laughs> And they kept it for later installments, because it's a good idea. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He revives himself, but I'll just throw this bomb near him. There we go. Much easier and goofier. Ow. <laughs> I feel like this was a thing in the 2D Zeldas too, but for some reason it wasn't in Ocarina of Time. Maybe they couldn't program it yet. That and the, uh, Stealthos in that game were different anyway. Yeah. Could you not use the bone hammer? You could, but this is just funner. And easier. Look at that. <laughs> I never thought to use bombs. Full on me. Well, it's not really, like, flat out said. I don't think any character ever says, You should use a bomb on a Stalfos. You should use something explosive on a thing with no <laughs> connective tissue. <laughs> yeah, like, you, you... I mean, if you were... If you had bombs in real life, would you be blowing up skeletons? <laughs> well, that would qualify as grave robbing, so I don't know. Or grave... With the whiz roads again. I really like the ice arrows. <laughs> he didn't even try. Oh, no way, he was summoning enemies. He got it at the last second, but still, it wasn't much. But unfortunately, he's alive. Okay, this is where it gets kind of goofy. I want to use the hammer and, uh... <laughs> yeah, I don't know what happened, and he unfroze before he hit the ground and he died anyway. Oh my god. So I don't know what happened there, I wanted to use the hammer, but I said, you know what, I'm glad that was uh, on recording. 
So wait, are you able to actually pick up frozen enemies and just throw them against a wall? I suppose, but the weird thing- I, I'm pretty sure you can, but the weird thing was he was just so high up that like, there was no way I should have been able to grab him. <laughs> what a magical knife. <laughs> and these guys- why are they here? Just- just- just why? Why were they in pots is my question. Because that's their sneak attack thing, but it's, they're just so lame. Because it's legalized in the Great Sea. <laughs> we need that. <laughs> I collect all of them even though I don't need them. Hey, you can sell them for money. Hey, you can sell them for money. Which we also don't need. Yeah. <laughs> Which we also don't need, but you also could have done that for the side quest. There's just a million ways to get money. If you notice, there's a gold dark nut. They fight exactly like the regular Dark Nuts, the only difference is, I believe, that they take longer to kill. I think they hit the same. So here's me trying out the magic armor, and, uh, see, every time you get hit, you lose money. My hearts are still good, though. Can you pick up the money you lose? No, it immediately disappears. It's just oh. to show you, look at what you lost! <laughs> So even though the Dark Nuts are easy to kill, there's kind of a lot of them and it becomes a lot of overwhelming. It's kind of hard to just focus on one because, you know, you want to parry one of them and then another one's going to hit you and you want to switch to that one, but you accidentally lock onto the wrong one and you get hit. That's probably the only thing that makes Dark Nuts difficult and hard to fight, but other than that, same as always. They can kill each other at least. Yeah, they can kill yeah. each other. It takes off some of the workload, but it's still just goofy. <laughs> you slapped him in the face. It was more of a backhand, but... In the face. <laughs> Don't talk back to me. Hey, look, he... He came at me, I came to his house, killed every single person in there, robbed his treasure, and he hit my magic shield and I lost money, therefore it was fair. I thought you were gonna say, hey, he came on to me. Oh, well, when four guys come to me, I have no choice. I can't help it if I'm attractive. <laughs> Another easy one. And that's Triforce piece number six. Pizza Joe can't help if he's the button that is the cutest. Oh. Now that his sister's out of the way, rubs his hands, <laughs> truly I can take the throne. <laughs> oh, Pizza Jane. Pizza Jane's having fun with the pirates. Who are, I'm assuming, is, are just aimlessly running around and getting into trouble. Yeah, because they don't have their captain anymore. Because <laughs> they don't know how to be pirates, and they're stupid. Errol's now captain. Pizza Jane's now captain. <laughs> Pizza Jane's... I would like to see a spin-off game where Pizza Jane's <laughs> yeah. is leading pirates. She writes you a letter, I'm now wanted in six of the seven seas. <laughs> Pizza Joe writes back, me too! <laughs> <laughs> you may get a meeting with the FBI soon. <laughs> so, I jump off to this side thinking the boat is there, and he's not. <laughs> Damn it. I knew I was gonna get laughed at. There's only two pieces left, and one of them is on Outset Island. We also didn't know that was there. He gave you a little side look, like, just get in, bitch. <laughs> Everything's on Outset Island. You remember, uh, when we were here during the Jaboon part, there was a guy up on the rock who was I talked to and he had a telescope and he was like, Ooh, there's something over there! Wonder what it is over there! And it's, it's just a Triforce piece. That guy. I don't talk to him now, though, because he's gross. Because <laughs> he's gross. <laughs> nice. What you're supposed to do is control the wind, take out your Deku Leaf, and glide over there. I'm so literal-minded sometimes, because unless I'm explicitly told to, I will think to take out a deck away from like, how the fuck am I supposed to go over there? <laughs> well, I can try jumping at it. Yeah. <laughs> now, uh, the wind direction I picked wasn't exactly the best. It, it probably would have been a little better if I made it go a little more to the left, but whatever. I have enough magic meter that'll still make it. However, if you haven't upgraded your magic meter and you do this, you're so totally gonna fall. Yeah. <laughs> So, you know, if you have more magic meter, you're allowed to fuck up, but, you know. Well, that just a very slow glide. Still waiting. That's cool, though, because if you cut the leaf, you just get most of it back anyway. Yeah. 
while ago I said that there's gonna be a lot of speed up, and that's because you're gonna see most of it here. This is, I believe it has a specific name. We're actually gonna see it really soon. But basically, this is just f endless floors, really like 30 floors of you fighting enemies, and you go deeper and deeper and deeper, and the Triforce piece is in the last one, the Savage Labyrinth. 30 floors of you fighting lots of enemies. Yeah, it's kind of like the Cave of Ordeals. Yeah. But you know how the Cave of Ordeals was optional? Yeah. This is necessary. <laughs> so uh, for the first two rooms, I'm going to give you a taste of what it's like. From then on, I'm just going to speed it up. Because there's a lot of me fighting. Yeah. And I do hope you guys have some good stories, because it's going to go on for a while. <laughs> Damn it! I'm glad you're relying on us too. <laughs> no, no, no! I've prepared stories. Stories for me and badly. No, no, no! I got stories. I got. Stories. They end with maids and spider janitors. Th they're not as good as Travis's, but you know, <laughs> there's something. Okay, so here's speed up time. I'm pretty sure there's gonna be something in the video that tells you when to skip if you don't want to see this, because it's just a lot of this. Uh, when I was in kindergarten, I don't know if I told you it was. Uh, I was put in a Spanish class because my parents wanted me to be in Spanish class. And uh, they weren't sure if I was gonna be an English speaker. Now you know I am. So I didn't quite understand what the concept of school was. So when they put me in the Spanish class, we had to do an assignment where we had to color a worksheet and we had to color a wagon and the wagon had to be red. Now me not knowing what school was and why there was a yelling lady yelling at all these other kids, <laughs> We were supposed to color the wagon red as a box of crowns. So we were supposed to take one. I took every color, and I colored my wagon into every color possible. And before I put you on a cliffhanger for a second, every ten rooms there's a break. You can get some health and some rupees. Like I said, every now and then there's gonna be a little break. And now back to the chaos. <laughs> Speaking of which, the speed-up screen does not get old. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's, it's really interesting, and he's not the only one that has a speed-up screen. <laughs> so, uh, I took every color, and I colored my wagon in this bizarre, horrible color. And the teacher's going around the room, she's like, good, good, good. Gets to mine. What is this? <laughs> and then she goes to the class, and she's like, class, what color did I say we were supposed to color the fucking wagon? And the Spanish teacher, so, you know, she's yelling and getting mad. And all the kids are like, red! Red! And then she looks at me, and I, and my argument was, there's red on it! <laughs> but, you know, it's just with all the other colors. I don't know why she was so mad. I guess she just hated her job so much. Oh, uh, that reminds me of a teacher I had when I was younger. When I was younger, uh, when I still lived in New Brunswick, my mom sent me to a French immersion school because she wanted me to learn French. She has this weird possible future where I'm broken down in Quebec and I can't go anywhere because I don't know French. <laughs> so we go to this French immersion teacher and back in, uh, when I was younger, I was a lot more socially anxious than I already am right now. And I also couldn't read social cues. I didn't really know what was socially acceptable to a lot of people. And I was anxious and stuff. So this French immersion teacher, she's a lot like your Spanish teacher, Yoshi. In that if you didn't know something or if you <laughs> did something differently than how she told you, she turned into a raging bitch. Was it also in kindergarten? I, I don't think so. I think I was in grade three. Oh, man. At one point, she was teaching us how to say our birthdays in French. And she asked me what my birthday was. It's like, novembre, trente, something, something in French. The French classes went a very long way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Creme brulee. I don't remember a lot. All I do fromage. But, um... <laughs> I started stuttering, and I couldn't remember the words, and I was being put on the spot, like, up in front of the whole class, and I just started crying, and she started Aww. yelling at me, and I just hid under the desk, and she basically just thought I was autistic from that point on, which, border borderline I am, but that's beside Gosh. the point. What a bitch. It went on for a while, and then apparently, by, like, the second week, 
every morning when I was supposed to get on the bus to go to school, I would like brace myself against the bus and scream and cry and tell my mom I didn't want to go. So eventually they pulled me out. Well, that's sad. Mine's more a depressing that's story than so Yoshi's. That's so sad. Oh I'm my sorry. god, Olivia. <laughs> So, uh, I paused it here because, uh, I wanted to show these two off and I murdered them, so there's no point anymore. Alright, I murdered. <laughs> Yay! Alright! I apologize for my less funny version of Yoshi's story. Well, actually, no, I stopped it because that was the last room. <laughs> Here's Triforce piece number seven. However, if you notice, there's a giant statue back there with a sundial on its head. If you remember that from the uh, Earth Temple, when we got our mirror shield, we had a bounce light off. We're gonna do that because uh, there's another prize in the Savage Labyrinth. We're gonna get it, and there's also more floors. Thankfully, this one is optional. <laughs> yeah, this one's optional, but I, I wanted to show it off anyway. It shows you how conscious of my surroundings I never noticed that. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay, Olivia. I have another story. <laughs> okay, tell me a story, Yoshi. Unless you wanted to go, Thorn, because, you know, she wanted to Oh, yeah, I have anything happening in my life ever. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, it's another kindergarten. The only good story I have is the first time Olivia and I had sex. And I don't know. <laughs> I feel like I told that on a podcast. I never told it in a Let's Play. You can tell it now if you want. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Olivia and I, first time we actually met in person was at Boston last year. And we had talked before, it's like, we had decided we're gonna do it. Uh, so we got to our hotel, and we had a really long nap, because sleeping at the airport is in finger quotes. Yeah, sleeping. You don't sleep, you close your eyes and hope. <laughs> I kinda slept. You can kinda sleep anywhere, though. Yeah, that's an attractive first image of me, though. Me with my head back over a chair, like... <laughs> <laughs> I was envious of you more than anything. <laughs> but we finally get there, we have a really long nap. Eventually, just kind of out of nowhere, we start kissing and get down to it. <laughs> and I literally had a moment where I was like, Okay, I guess we're doing this. <laughs> and, but... You know, your first time is always super awkward and weird. And yeah. thankfully it was awkward in a funny way. Yeah. So, first Olivia kicks me in the head. I'm sorry. And then I repeatedly start knocking her head against the wall. I don't even know how it happened, it's like my legs were numb. And I couldn't- I think we were trying to change positions. And then you just whacked yeah. me. And then like, we ended up being late for um, supper. Yeah, we were supposed to meet our friends, I think, an hour before. Yeah. I didn't see the text until I was like, maybe I should actually check the phone. Yeah, and, and when we could show up, I'm like, Hey, Chess, I'm sorry we're late. I have a good reason, but I can't tell you. <laughs> and then she got a giant smile on her face. It was so bizarre. <laughs> <laughs> Chess is so thirsty over our relationship. It's funny. <laughs> but I think the fact... We, I was we were both a little bit awkward first time meeting like we weren't sure how far to step at first but the second you kicked me ahead it was like okay there's no more boundaries anymore and then we both just start laughing our asses off oh my god oh man <laughs> well I can't wait to for when uh, me and Ashley do so that way I can tell you how it went for me <laughs> oh yeah that's happening this New Year's eh maybe who knows <laughs> Well, anyway, I have another story. Uh, again, in kindergarten, because for some reason, kindergarten was like the most the high point of my life. I don't know why. <laughs> but, so, um, we had a school assembly, and uh, you know how they would randomly do school assemblies <laughs> when you're kids, and it would be like random shit. Yeah. It wouldn't be like later on where it was like, okay, so you know, next week we're gonna have a thunderstorm, so don't die. You know, stuff like that. <laughs> so. <laughs> That's how they are! Passaic. That's, that's how it was for me in middle school and high school. Nostradamus. So, uh, when you're a little kid, it's always like cool shit and like, Oh, he's a fundraiser, or he's a puppet show or something. For me, it was this guy who... I, I'm positive he's not famous or a talented musician. 
because his stage name was Mike. What the fuck? And that's all he had going for him. And I don't remember what he looked like. <laughs> yeah, I stopped the speed up here because this is the first time we see these dark nuts. These are the strongest dark nuts. They hit the hardest and they take the longest time to die. They fight just like every other dark nut. So this guy is um Mike the guitar guy. And he's TM. Really, I guess he's really cool because he's just there performing for us. And I don't remember his face. But all I remember was that he played, like, the first few chords to Smash Mouth's All-Star. <laughs> and he did that, and then we were just supposed to believe, yeah, Mike is fucking cool, man. So, I have no idea what his last name is, or if he ever went on to anything big. But I, all I know is that Mike was pretty cool. So, they announce, hey, if you want Mike's autograph, just, you know come after school in the gymnasium i didn't know what an autograph was so i went <laughs> i went and i got mike's autograph i had like a piece of paper <laughs> for this one guy who i don't know it was like a piece of shitty notebook paper and now you have it framed no and then <laughs> then he just wrote mike on it and that was it! That was my autograph for Mike the Guitar Guy. For all I know, that could just be a stage name. Mike probably isn't even his real name. His real name is Francis. And that's the first time I've ever actually kind of technically died, but I had a fairy, so whatever. <laughs> Doesn't even matter. I don't know if, like, they hired a puppet show and they had a cancel, and they just needed, like, a, a replacement, and then, like, hey, you remember that old college roommate of yours? What's he doing? Oh, he's living in a van. Well, call him oh. in. We need to fill in an hour. Yeah, yeah, here's a hint. If he's playing at kindergarten schools, odds are he probably never went on to anything. <laughs> Everybody needs to start. <laughs> so anyway, uh, after all that, we get the hero's charm. This is an interesting little item. Um... It's uh, another optional item. You can put it on whenever you want. On the gamepad, it's not like a, it's not like an equipable item like the uh, magic armor or the other weapons I have on right now. It's more of just like something that's in the sub menu. You push it, and a pizza show puts this wacky thing on. <laughs> and uh, if he puts it on, and now he's able to see the health bar of his enemies. Oh my god! You know, right after I fought millions of enemies. <laughs> Now I need to know! Is it supposed to be a mustache or teeth? I... I'm gonna go with teeth or face. <laughs> you don't see him growing fangs. So, in the HD version, that's how you get it, but in the original, you were supposed to give Miss Marie 50 butterflies, and then she would give this to you. I don't know why they moved it over here. I guess they thought that would be a better prize. I'm assuming in the original, what was in that chest was a heart piece or something, but whatever. Now that we have seven Triforce pieces, we're on an island that doesn't actually have a Triforce piece. If we go northwest of Outset after we're all done to A6, that's Diamond Steep Island. And the last Triforce piece is located on the ghost ship. Oh, uh, yeah. Now, the incredible chart just has a picture of the ghost ship. The ghost ship is interesting because you actually can find it sailing around the ocean randomly if you're, you know, if you sail around at night a lot and you travel, you actually do encounter it. But you can't really interact with it, it just looks nice and it's creepy and stuff. However, because the Triforce piece is there, we have to go there. But, we can't access the ghost ship. So, we're on this island because here we get something that lets us find the ghost ship. Mm -hmm. It's a short little i don't want to say a puzzle because it's really just you guessing trial and error unless you already know which pot you're supposed to jump into you go into one of these pots you just jump off the other side we've seen this a couple times all you got to do is find the right jars and then you'll get the prize <laughs> if i remember correctly isn't the um space on the map where the ghost ship is dependent on the phase of the moon yeah yeah and I don't know if this is like an HD thing, but I remember in the original that when you had the ghost ship chart and you looked at your C chart, like you could see a picture of the ghost ship flashing on a certain square. Uh, yeah. It doesn't do that in this version. On my it gamepad, doesn't? no, on my gamepad it doesn't tell me, so I had to go looking for it. You had to actually work for it. Yeah. 
which kind of sucks a little bit, but whatever. <laughs> <laughs> so, like she said, you had to go find it depending on the points of the moon. You can't see it because it's on the gamepad. So, depending on where it's on the moon, it could either be on E1, A6, which we're on right now, F5, C2, G7, G3, and B4. Bingo! B4. Nice one. Good job, <laughs> Olivia. Yes. B4 is Great Fish Island, and that's where it appeared for me. We'll be seeing that soon. So yeah, you just gotta find the right jar, and uh... Looking at it back now, it's like, oh shit, I should've looked it up, because because I do a couple of transitions of me fucking it up. <laughs> I work hard opening that one, I'm thinking, yeah, I'm smart. Why don't you use the stick and burn it? <sighs> Damn it! See, because I got it wrong. But no, you can use the stick and burn it, but it's just... I didn't need to, because I could just stab it. Or roll into it or break it. Is this the right jar? Damn it! <laughs> yeah. Okay, I'm not gonna lie. A little bit more to that story. It's, it's, it's done, but... I actually did try looking him up. Mike? <laughs> it's just all I had was Mike the guitar guy, so there wasn't much to go on. Is that where your fascination with the guitar guy from Bioshock Infinite came from? <laughs> no! That was for something incredible. That was all an all stupid thing altogether. My obsession with Mike the Guitar Guy was like, it was like five in the morning and I couldn't sleep. <laughs> and then I remembered that and I started laughing like crazy because I just remembered he existed. And I'm like, what the fuck is he doing these days? Does he still do that? <laughs> Mike, if you're watching... And if you're the Mike I think you are, then you're probably not him, but if you happen to be Mike the Guitar Guy, and not the Guitar Guy in, like, Tennessee, I mean the, the Guitar Guy who appeared in New Jersey one time. What are you doing now? You still do that? Mike who plays guitar it narrows it down so much. I know. Who, who plays guitar in New Jersey like there's no guitar players in New Jersey named Mike. <laughs> that narrowed it down to nothing. So we get the ghost ship chart. Now we can enter the ghost ship. And find Mike. And find Mike. That's where he is. That's a possibility. He could have died. <laughs> Although I don't want it because I need to meet him. I need to say, hey, can you still play like the first bit of Smash Mouth and nothing else? It'd be funnier if you just play nothing but the first little bit of smoke on the water. <laughs> oh boy. My childhood was fucking stupid. I'm sorry. <laughs> So, now that we have the ghost ship chart, we can go find it. However, trying to get on the boat. I was under it, actually. <laughs> However, it's now daytime. It just turned daytime. The ghost ship does not appear in daytime, so we have to make it night again. The sun woke up just to sit down again. Bye. Cause a tsunami. <laughs> uh, here I am trying to find it. Because I thought I had the right coordinates, I, I didn't. I thought it was right, I wasn't. <laughs> well, cause like, the guide I had said like, it was gonna be here, and then I'm like, no it's not, and so I just tried looking at all the other spots, and it was on Great Fish Isle. We didn't warp to Great Fish Isle, but uh, I'm close enough next to it. This is actually Tingle's place. Why'd you come back here? Because I needed to know if it was around here. I speed it up because it is here, but I'm not going the right way. We needed to know if Tangled was dead. There it is! See it all the way in the background? That shadowy... horrible mast thing with the thunder and the fire? Beetle. That's the ghost ship. Outside it looks cool, but inside... What a letdown! Yeah, that's what I thought when I was like, eh, this is it. All there are is here is him and two ghosts. At least they added spooky faces onto the floor. And that makes it a ghost ship. I guess. Wasn't it in the original, it was just a wood floor? I think so, yeah. I think it was still purpley. <laughs> I think there was just fog in the original. Ugh, oh, sad. <laughs> I uh, actually do struggle a little bit. I guess I'm doing a little poorly here just to balance out how lame this is. <laughs> because th that this, it's really just three guys and the Wizrobe. And I let one of them possess me, but since I walked into the beam of light, he's gone. <laughs> 
So yeah, the wizard the wizard robe is always the most annoying because you can just summon enemies. <laughs> really, he shouldn't have been able to summon that, but I was just taking so long and just eh, whatever. He summons a box of fruit loops. I do my bomb trick, I believe. Or I just flat out murder it. I think I murder it. Yeah, I do. Cool. You keep saying things that don't happen, you <laughs> stop lying to us. <laughs> it's called tension, Olivia. <laughs> and me forgetting <laughs> It's called being a liar. It's called me forgetting shit. It's called your batteries dying. <laughs> like me forgetting to charge the batteries. Eh, I don't really charge it until like the game starts yelling at me or the pad goes red. My game pad was flashing red, so I don't charge it until I get the piece. So, um, if you're gonna go on the ghost ship and get this part, you're gonna like naturally just go to the chest. Actually break all of the jars first, because if you open the chest, it's just gonna boot you out. Yeah, I learned that the hard way. Nintendo looked at this and said, you know, the ghost ship has a lot of potential. Let's make it the central point in Phantom Hourglass. This thing with one room. Yes. Becomes the focal point of the next game. This thing that <laughs> looks like a generic submarine interior. <laughs> uh, now that we got the last Triforce piece, the Triforce of Courage is back to normal. No thanks, Groose. Oh, so you can see the mask right there, too, see? Now it's a proper wedge of cheese. Now that we have the Triforce, now we can go back to Hyrule Castle and beat up Ganondorf. Joy of joys. I wonder how Tetra's doing. <clears throat> Zelda. <laughs> She's Tetra to me. Yeah. <laughs> Let me have my brown skin characters, okay? Yeah. <laughs> I still don't get the whole, a royalty, I have to be white. I'm guessing it's supposed to be like a tan from living out on the ocean. But then her eyes go from red to blue. Do they? Yeah. Tetra's eyes aren't red. They're not? Okay, never mind. Oh, no, they're blue. I'm going blind! Uh, anyway, in the next part, we're gonna go back to Hyrule Castle. But before we end the video, the last Miiverse bottle. <laughs> I did not get... Many. This is my favorite one, though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have birthday pizza, Joe, and I'm not sure if this one was for me, but I liked it anyway, so I featured it in a link link. We're gonna steal it for the thread. <laughs> We're gonna put it on the thread anyway. <laughs> so yeah, that was the Triforce hunt. Not as bad as it used to be. Yeah. Still pretty... Bad. That's like, that's like saying a bronchoscopy is slightly worse than a colonoscopy. <laughs> Still, we... We did it. Most of us don't have that experience in our life, sweetheart. <laughs> yeah, I just pretended to know what you were talking about, so I just went with it. It's like saying getting your head repeatedly knocked against the wall isn't as bad as getting your head kicked. <laughs> <laughs> it's like getting hit by a train and saying, that was alright. <laughs> Better than a steamboat, though. <laughs> it was like a spider janitor, why would you do that? <laughs> Let's ask Travis. Oh, he's not here. 